to do it unto the mm. Lord. And we are so glad you're joining us for Hope Today. It's a special day. I'm here with my dear friend, Tom McGuff. Yeah, Tom buddy. Hollis is out in the sunset. I guess it's, I don't know, sunset, sunrise, wherever he is. <laughs> oh, he's enjoying his vacation. But I'm so glad that we have such a special show today because we, do. we are a dress down for a specific reason. Oh, we do. And, and there's a reason. There's a yeah. reason because, you know, there's a wonderful passage. Uh, Paul said to the church in Philippi, he said, not that I'm perfect and not that I'm where I'm supposed to be either. But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, I reach forward to what lies ahead and I press on toward the goal of the higher calling that is on my life, on your life, on your life in Christ Jesus. And today, I started the day, and I've said this before, but on Tuesdays, I'm blessed to start the day down at the Pittsburgh Praise Prayer Walk along the beautiful river walkway there uh, by the stadiums. We go right down from the Clemente Bridge and ministries are gathering there in prayer that next year will fill one of the stadiums with people from Pittsburgh praying to Almighty God for our city, for our state, for our nation, and for our world. So there's a significance to this, and we have a very special guest on the program today. Brian Cook is, is here, and he's the new FCA director and going to be telling us all about this wonderful ministry using sports as their metaphor. And what does FCA stand for, just in case people... Fellowship don't... of Christian Athletes, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what it is. You, you, we all love sports, and we know that, that sports and sports channels and ball games Games of every type, we know that they, they get these huge audiences. And FCA is one of those ministries that uses that, plays off of that, and, and, and reaches out to these young aspiring athletes to tell them about our victory in Jesus Christ. Well, speaking of that, you know, actually yesterday, a friend of mine, her name was Anita, she sent me this video of Sydney McLaughlin. She was the gold winning Olympian hurdler. And just yes. how I really love what I appreciate about Sid, like shout out to the Sydneys out there. <laughs> That's right. But she just always like her faith was so bold and on display. And I just think it's such a wonderful opportunity. I always love when you see athletes when they finish the go over the, um, the finish line or when they're getting interviewed and they ask and I give all oh, glory to God. That's I right. love that more than anything else. And sometimes I always watch with my husband. He loves sports. and We love sure. watching it together. But that silver lining of faith that is so common that you see in sports and it should be modeled in our lives. As it, it really truly should and, and, and there's that endorsement power and, and I think it's important too. Uh, uh, we prayed, Lucy and I prayed uh, for these last Olympics because all of those athletes now were put on a world stage yeah. and we prayed that God's testimony would be in them in a powerful way. Well, we always like to begin with the word of God because it is the power unto salvation and we have a very appropriate verse. Paul wrote to the church in Coloss and he said to them in the third chapter, whatever you do, Work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Jesus Christ you are serving. Praise be to God. Essentially, you know what? Enough of the apathy, enough of the just mailing it in. But in anything that I do, my day to day is committed to doing everything that I do for the glory of Almighty God. It is so important, you know, no matter if you're like staying at home, no matter, matter if you're a teacher, if you're here, whatever God is calling you to do, we need to work unto the Lord. That is something that I've just That's been right. doing recently in my life where I'm just thanking God, praising God, and just knowing that where he's called me to be, I'm just going to show the love of Jesus. I'm going to influence for him because when we are in certain positions, when we're in certain atmospheres, when he places us in certain positions that maybe we don't understand, we are called ambassadors of Christ and we have Christ in us and That's we're right. able to go out and show show that love, show that light to other people. That is our calling because right now more than ever, people are looking and crying out for answers. They're desperate for hope. They're feeling hopeless, overwhelmed. Right. I hear so many stories right now of people who are just like their hearts are failing, Tom, and they're That's just, right. they don't know what to do, but we have the answer and we know it's in Jesus. If we have that precious answer in us, then we should be going out and sharing, as you like to say, one beggar to another beggar That's where right. to find food. <laughs> well, Seals and Crofts did a song when I was in high school and it said, we may never pass this way again. And you know, I, I, just, I just accentuate this Bible verse by saying that you may never pass this way again. We may never have a day like today. The opportunity that God is going to give to you, it might seem small. It might seem insignificant. In the big picture, how important is it? Well, it's very important because you may never pass that way again. That person that God gives you the opportunity to witness to, that son, that daughter, you may never pass that way again. You may never have that opportunity to tell that story, to share that lesson, to give that testimony like God is going to give you today. So make the best of it and do everything that you do this day 
for the glory of Almighty God. Well, we have a very special guest. Can't wait to talk about him. You know, we always love to talk about sports here in the Berg and, and in this part of the country. But we're going to have Brian Cook, and he's the new director for the FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And he's going to be giving us his testimony, how he came to know the Lord. He was an athlete. He was a wrestler. And he's going to be saying about how God has taken that testimony and now built it into a local ministry. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back with Brian Cook. God, I feel so helpless. Lord, I don't even know what to pray. God, are you listening? We've all had situations that feel insurmountable. We want to pray, but don't know where to begin. If you have a mountain in your life that needs to be moved, let us send Prayers That Move Mountains for your best gift to the ministry. In the pages of this handbook of Prayers We Know God Answers, you will discover prayers of repentance, confession, obedience, submission, praise, and worship. Prayer and confession of Scripture are two of the most powerful weapons we have in life. Keep this invaluable tool with you wherever you go and be prepared with powerful declarative prayers for every circumstance. To receive your very own Prayers That Move Mountains, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. Welcome back. Well, our next guest was an athlete himself and now remains a huge sports fan, just like all of us here in the Berg. <laughs> Brian Cook is the Pittsburgh Metro Director of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and their vision is to see the world transformed by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. Brian, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. <laughs> well, you have a, a wonderful story and, and obviously the passion that you have to tell that story now to young aspiring athletes is born out of your coming to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. How did, how did Jesus Christ make his way known to you? Yeah, sure. So uh, thanks again for having me on. Sure. This is great. Sure. Um, I grew up here in the Pittsburgh area uh, with my younger sister. Um, we were raised by our two deaf parents uh, who we love very much, uh, great people. One way we connected growing up uh, here in Pittsburgh was through exercise and sports. Sure. Uh, I remember my dad taking us to football stadiums and we would work out and uh, it was just a lot of fun growing up. Uh, and then in my middle school years, um, my parents had some marital conflict, uh, which isn't uncommon, and uh, they ended up separating. Uh, and that was very challenging for me personally. Um, but also along the way, uh, during that challenging time, I had uh, family members that were really supportive and encouraging, uh, teachers and coaches uh, that really spoke into my life during that time. Uh, my aunt often tells a story which I completely forgot about. <laughs> when I was uh, nine years old, uh, she took me to a Billy Graham concert at Three Rivers Stadium. Yes. Uh, and Billy used this analogy that our hearts are like a donut. Uh, mm. And the only thing that can fill the center is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Wow, uh, and she, she said to me at that event that I accepted Christ, uh, which is great. Because uh, in my high school years, I would say I fell away. Uh, some of my personal uh, sin struggles were, you know, alcohol abuse, sexual sin, uh, low self-esteem, poor academic performance. Uh, but one of, one of my main motivators uh, for many young men and women today was uh, sports. Uh, I love the sport of wrestling. Uh, so that kept me motivated, kept me driven. Um, upon graduation from high school, I went to the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown where I wrestled. Uh, we have a great wrestling tradition at That's UPJ. Right. Um, while also at UPJ, I got connected very briefly with uh, FCA through a teammate. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say he was one of those guys that planted that seed of faith in right. Christ in my life again. Um, and upon graduation from UPJ, I knew I wanted to become a, a teacher and a coach uh, because wrestling and adult uh, men and women had an impact on me and I wanted to impact young people the same way. So I ended up moving to uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, people asked me, why did you go there? Uh, at the time I didn't know, but I know that the Lord took me there. And uh, I started my teaching, teaching and coaching career there. And uh, I got to coach with a guy by the name of Drew White. And uh, Drew had a deep, deep love for Jesus Christ. Uh, that was the first love of his life. 
and I saw how his life for Christ uh, impacted his marriage, uh, impacted his relationship with his kids, and I saw the love of Christ come through and how he loved the guys that we coached. Um, you know, in one specific way, I just remember uh, every year we would do uh, an annual community service project. And it was great just to see the young men out in the community, outside the sports arena, right. connecting, serving the community, and really uh, loving their neighbors as themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just really cool to see how coaching can be used as a ministry. Um, and that made a profound impact on me. So uh, after 12 years of being a teacher and coach, uh, two years ago, um, God opened the door for me to leave my career as a teacher mm. and to enter this ministry uh, with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And I love what I get to do today because, uh, I mean, God knows, God knows us best. He God knows does. us best. He surely does. You know, this, is a, this position is a combination of all my passions and skill. Uh, you know, I love young people. I love teaching. I love sports. And now through all those avenues, I get to teach them about the love of Jesus Christ, which is great. Brian, you've been obedient to God. And sometimes we, we grow frustrated because we have a vision for our lives, but it doesn't align with God's vision for our lives. You've allowed God's vision for your life to align with your vision. And that's why the provision is there. Now, we talk about Western Pennsylvania and you're back here now. Yes, there is just an uncanny love that we have of sports. And I think, I think that uh, uh, the best example of that is when you come in, when you fly into Pittsburgh, you see two, pic, two, two uh, statues there. You see George Washington, the father of our country, and you see Franco Harris and the Immaculate Reception. That's going to tell you something about the people here. We, we love our sports here. But you play off of that, and, and you're able to engage people through sports with FCA. Yeah, so, um, you know, for us, our, our vision is to see the world transformed by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. Mm. And our mission is to lead every coach and athlete into a relationship with Christ. Um, Praise God. You know, and as I shared before, I saw not only as an athlete, but as a, as a coach, as a coach, the impact that coaches can have not only on uh, the sports life and personal life of a young person, but also on their faith life by the uh, experiences that they give the young people. Um, you know, two ways that we try to fulfill our vision today. Uh, one way is through our camps. Uh, we have camps every summer, uh, multi-sport camps. This past summer, we had our uh, multi-sport camp at Kutztown University, nine sports, 350 high school athletes from five different wow. states, wow. 70 college volunteers that served as our huddle leaders that would teach the high school students about the love of Christ through Bible study and discipleship. And uh, it was cool, it was amazing to me to see so many people from every different background coming together, playing sports, and uh, growing in their love for Jesus Christ and worshiping Him all week. It was amazing. Um, I feel like that was an opportunity. I feel like it was a gift for me to really see the power of this ministry. Uh, and then one other way we, uh, right now we're focusing on uh, fulfilling this vision is um, through our huddle ministry or our campus ministry, where we try to connect with middle school, high school, or college athletes um, that have a faith and love Jesus and train, equip, and empower them to go into their campuses, their, their school campuses, and reach their teammates, their classmates, and their campus for Jesus Christ. So that's the gift and opportunity I have today through this ministry to impact young people, to in, impact their campus for Christ. Praise God. You know, Brian, as you're speaking, you're just talking about yes. what FCA is doing for young people who are in high school and with college. It sounds like the kingdom. Yes. Like you, you know, every nation tribe and tongue yes, coming together yes. about the love of Jesus, building each other up, becoming disciples. Can you share just any stories of how you've seen, you know, some young person's life change or encountered the love of Jesus? Yeah, you know, I want to let the Holy Spirit guide me. Just one story that comes to mind for me from the Kutztown camp this summer. Uh, there was a young man from Philadelphia by the name of David. Uh, he was on the football team. He's there for football camp. We had over 150 uh high school kids there for football, uh, and he was injured. And, uh, you know, my role was to encourage and empower the college athletes that were ministering to the high school guys. And I saw uh, David, he was injured, and I asked him if I could pray with him, and uh, he let me pray with him. Uh, and later he said to me, which was amazing, it, it literally brought tears to my eyes. He said, I thought I was coming for a football camp. 
at this camp, I learned about the love of Jesus. And he said, when you prayed for me, he said, I felt loved and accepted. And uh, man, that, that touched my heart uh, because, you know, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to use sports to introduce young adults to the love of Jesus Christ. And it's just an amazing way to do it. So. Brian, would you say, like, you, I could see you getting, like, emotional just, re, you know, remembering that story is because do you see, you know, just what you walk through is that you walk through things like, you know, your parents were divorced and just that separation. There's a lot of turmoil that a lot of young people are going through. Do you see that a lot with the athletes that you're dealing with and just seeing how God is using sports to bring healing, you know, bring community, a family environment around them? I think all people are searching. Mm -hmm. We all want to know and have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And what I think is beautiful about FCA is for many of these young people, they're already within these teams. They already have relationships with other men and women on their team. And when there's somebody on their team that has and knows the love of Christ and they can share that with their teammates, um, they're receptive to it. They'll hear it and it helps them grow in their faith with Christ and their hope. Um, that's what I love. Praise be to God. I want to talk to you. We're going to go to a break here shortly, but sure. I, I want to talk with you after that break about the metamorphosis or the changing climate. I'm sure that ministering to young people is entirely different than it would have been 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and especially compounded by the pandemic where we've become even less socialized than, than where we were before. But I want you to think about that. And that's what we're going to be talking about when we come back. And Brian is going to be ministering to us just as he does to the athletes. So please stay tuned. We're going to be back with more of this wonderful interview. Please stay tuned for Hope Today. be winding down, but things are heating up here at Cornerstone. Stay in the know about all our best programs and behind the scene happenings by subscribing to our free Hope Today newsletter. August offers an inspirational article by Tom Hollis, an update about our equipment upgrades, and a blueberry crumble dashing dish recipe. To get your copy, call our prayer line or visit our website at ctvn.org backslash news. We're so glad you're joining us for Hope Today. We're with Brian Cook and he is the director of Christ, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and we're so glad that he's joining us today because we want to dive into right now, you know, there's so many young people right now, Brian, that are hurting, they're dealing with suicide, they're dealing with yes. depression. I mean, this generation, it's just, it's heartbreaking to see what they're walking through and what they're going through. And you have an opportunity with your organization to really just love on them like never before. Can you kind of speak to us about the climate that you see that's happening with these young people? Sure. I think, uh, you know, one maybe struggle that comes to mind when, in my experience in ministering with uh, athletes, is just identity. Uh, identity is huge. You know, for athletes, it's very easy, and I can relate to this myself. It's very easy to become entirely consumed in your sport, and that, yeah. that's who you become. Um, and what I love about Jesus and this ministry is, you know, through our discipleship and our huddles and our camps, I really believe that we're given the opportunity to teach young people about what their true identity is, their true identity and who they are in Jesus Christ. You know, that God loved them, that he created them, that he has a plan for their life. Um, yes, they want to be successful on, this, on the field, but really at the end of the day, what matters most is their relationship with Jesus Christ. So, you know, speaking to that question, I feel like one area of struggle is, you know, just this identity. Who am I? And uh, if we try and find it anywhere else outside of Christ, there's going to be confusion. So I think this is the opportunity we have with FCA to really instill in them who they are in Jesus. Ryan, is a facet of your ministry once this young athlete accepts Jesus as their savior, are you able to equip them? Are you able to teach them and mentor them how they're able to best share their faith with teammates as they go on to college, as they go in on to pro, perhaps professional sports, but how they, they can effectively share that faith and give their testimony. Yeah, sure. So uh, we have a focus right now, which is our, our E3 discipleship program, uh, Engage, Equip, Empower. Mm. So we want to engage young people into our huddles, into our camps. 
uh, into our sports programs. Once they're engaged and they're growing in their relationship with Christ, um, we want to uh, equip them, you know, in their knowledge of God's word, equip them in how to pray, equip them in how to evangelize and share their faith, faith with others. Then in God's timing, right, we want to um, ask them challenging questions and empower them to be disciple makers themselves to go out and, and reach their teammates. Uh, and what's great about FCA is, you know, we're, we're an international organization. That's right. uh, we have 2,500 missionaries on staff. And so anybody that comes to Christ through the ministry of FCA, whether they're middle school, high school, college, or even professional level, wherever they go, they have opportunities to continue to connect with, back with the ministry to make an impact for Christ throughout the world. That's just really incredible just hearing about the yes. impact just through how God is using the sports world, the sports arena, just to draw people unto himself like never before. And Brian, as we were sitting here, just really thought, you know, you, you with God, you study the word. Is there something specifically in this season? You know, we're all in this huddle together right now here on Hope we Today. Sure we're all part of the, the team, like Jesus's team. Yeah. Is there something he's speaking to you right now that it just that is in your spirit that you would like to share with our audience just to encourage them in this season? Sure. Um, yeah, I'd say two things. You know, I, sh I shared with my story before, you know, my parents are both deaf and, uh, you know, I love my parents. I love the deaf community. And I want to share now that I feel like God has given me a vision, an opportunity to reach um, and partner with and build relationships with the deaf community through the ministry of FCA. Um, you know, Tom and I talked a little bit earlier about how next summer uh, I'm preparing and we are preparing to host a deaf sports camp. And I think it's going to be, you know, God's the one that's going to make it, make it happen. Uh, but I really believe that he's going to do great work to connect uh, more people within the deaf community uh, through sports to the local church and ultimately into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. And, uh, you know, something to share with the viewers. Um, I really believe that the younger generation, uh, you know, our young people, um, you know, hold the keys to our future. Um, that's why I'm passionate about this. As a teacher, um, I became a teacher and coach because I wanted to impact young people. And what the opportunity we have today through FCA is to young, impact young people through this ministry for Christ. And I really believe that God has given us this time now to impact them for him and just raise up Christian leaders for the next generation. Ryan, I know that there would be soccer moms, midget football dads that are, <laughs> that are watching this. Yes. And, and I know when Lucy and I and our, our boys were, were of that age, we, we, were, uh, we would look at to any way in which we could help them as athletes and also help them in their walk with the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity to minister to, to parents and grandparents that might be watching this, or even, even that young athlete that may be flipping through and tuning in. I want you to tell them the fresh word, the promise about how they can have victory in Jesus Christ. Yeah, um, you know, it's coming to mind to me. It's just, you know, my personal story. Right. Um, and verses that come, came to mind for me. Uh, just two verses. One is Romans 3.23, oh. uh, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory right. of God. Uh, we can all relate to that, right? There's areas of our lives, our, of our lives that we know is not perfect. Um, but we know in Christ we have forgiveness, which is a beautiful thing. <laughs> we it can't is. forgive ourselves. Only Christ can forgive us. Uh, and the other verse is just uh, Romans 10, 9. Uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And um, yeah, there's nothing more fulfilling in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, for parents that have their kids in sports, I love sports. I'm passionate about sports. I think kids can learn so many valuable life lessons through sports. But I think at the end of the day, our job as parents and coaches and teachers, when we have the opportunities to rem remind young people of who they are in Christ, right? Their academics, their sports performance doesn't define them. Jesus is the one that defines them. And he calls them loved and cared for and forgiven. And he has a perfect plan for their life. So that's a powerful word. I can tell you for me, from the time that I was a little boy, I would have been five years old when my brother, my older brother came home with a flyer that there was going to be a new little league opening up. And, and we became a baseball family, became consumed by it. And, and, and I still to this day 
take rubber coated baseballs from uh, that I used to throw against the brick wall <laughs> and, and I, I call it the metamorphosis of the rubber coated baseball and I talk with young athletes and talk about the hard work and, and the commitment and the dedication and how God blessed it to come true. When it came time for me to receive Jesus as my savior, what had been my strength now was my weakness because I thought that I was an achiever. I thought that I could accomplish salvation exactly the way that I accomplished good academics in school, uh, 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 being drafted as a 17-year-old before I even graduated from high school, and, and that was a detriment. And I was sadly mistaken. I, I grew up in the church, and, and, and I knew that, that, um, that God uh, loved me, and I know that Jesus died for my sins, but I really felt that I could earn that place with him in heaven. Well, thank God for Jesus' people that had the audacity. At a high point in my life, as a 20-year-old, I came back after the 75 season. I was the youngest rostered player in the big leagues. Everything that I had dreamed to come true, God had blessed to come true. But praise be to God, it was there in that off season that friends and, and Jesus people had the audacity to invade my personal space and tell me that it wasn't by works, that it was by His grace, it was by His mercy. And the salvation verse, the one verse that I could not misunderstand, that I could not misinterpret, was Paul writing to the church in Ephesus and he said to them, for by grace, God's grace, you and I have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And you maybe are a good young athlete and you maybe work hard and you've had a lot of success, but our relationship with him is through faith, a precious, precious gift. Won't you receive him in this hour? Make him your Lord and perform for his glory now and evermore. Thank you, dear God, for the blessing of that new life. Amen and amen. On tomorrow's Hope Today, Discover how to reignite your faith. Pastor and worship leader Steele Crosswhite shares how you can find God's calling for your life by experiencing His perfect and unfailing love. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.